Hey y'all, this is uh, William here, William McDaniel Albritton. And today, uh, our presentation is about presentation software. So, uh, presentation software about presentation software. And we'll also talk about uh, databases, database management systems to be exact, and figure out uh, what's going on with that. Okay, so let's see what we have for our first part here. And again, uh, this presentation software is about presentation software. But anyway, uh, this is a combination of text and graphics, and they're used to make presentations. So what are you going to present at your presentation? Uh, also called presentation graphics. And for these, a lot of times where you're going to make a speech, or you might want to tell a story, uh, you'll use uh, this kind of software to do that. And you know, you got images, uh, you might throw in some audio, there might be some video. Uh, you know, lately they're more into audience interaction even, so you might have some live polls. Okay, you might have your audience have these little clickers and um, you know, okay, what do you think about this uh, fact or what do you think about this, uh, what's your opinion on this? And then you can pull the audience and you know, it's kind of see what the audience thinks. So it's a, it's a good way to bring in the audience to your presentation. Um, but yeah, so whenever you're telling a story, or you want to get your point across, maybe uh, some kind of presentation to a company, that kind of thing, or maybe in front of your class, this is how we do it. All right, so let's see what else we have here. So there's different programs, right? Different computer programs you can use for this. Uh, one uh, is Microsoft PowerPoint. All right, y'all probably pretty familiar with this. But guess what? There's other things besides PowerPoint. Uh, there's OpenOffice, uh, Impress. So that is um, some free software that's, that's out there, open source. And then, of course, Apple's got their thing, Apple Keynote. And then Google Docs, so Google's big as well, so they just call theirs presentation. And then there's some little guys. So Prezi, uh, one's called Slide Dog. Give me a Slide Dog there. And then uh, other ones are Clear Slide or Slide Rocket. So check them out. Um, you know, most people just, you know, when they look at a presentation, they're like, okay, PowerPoint. But there's plenty of other things out there uh, other than PowerPoint, and I'm sure people have various uh, good and bad um, <laughs> opinions about PowerPoint. Uh, what's the common term? Death by PowerPoint, I believe, yeah. Um, and then a, a cool thing to do, too, is I'll, I'll give you a few tips about presentations, but you might want to Google like um, what, what not to do for a uh, PowerPoint presentation. There's a good... Uh, what YouTube video out there about what not to do. It's pretty, pretty silly. Okay, let's see what else we got. All right, so a couple things with the presentation software, and uh, we will get in more details, but this is more a general overview. So a template or theme, they're kind of similar, um, applies to like a pre-designed style uh, layout for a presentation. So it's pretty good if you're not sure what colors to use or what matches what. You know, I get trouble matching my socks. Uh, I get trouble matching the color of my socks, and they're both black. So, um, any rate, so they have a set of colors, say fonts, uh, certain effects that go with that, and it spits up, it spits up your uh, presentation, it makes it look all uh, artsy fartsy and nice. And the template can also have sample slides, while typically a theme does not. So there's slight difference between the two. Uh, but again, um, these are great if you're not sure what colors that match. And um, so please check out templates when you're doing a presentation. Okay, so what else we got here? So there's different animations you can apply. You can apply that to the text. Uh, you can do the graphics. You can do it to different uh, icons that you have on your um, presentation. And so these are used for additional emphasis. You want to emphasize a point, hey, look here, you know, look at me, uh, that kind of thing. And it makes your presentation more dynamic. So again, uh, we don't want to have just 
black and white text and someone reading them um, out, you want to have uh, get your point across graphically as well. Now, the, the flip side is don't overuse. So uh, when you first start out making PowerPoint slides or, or presentations for that matter, um, oh, wow, I can, I can animate, man, well, I'll check this out. And then the text going here and then like, you know, maybe the next couple words go like that or, you know, you got some animation coming out and, and then you got some crazy transition between the slides. Wow. Um, so kind of chill out with that if you have too much going on then it gets kind of distracting and then people aren't sure what you're emphasizing okay so you want to emphasize a certain point by using the animations all right but don't emphasize all the points I guess is my point all right okay so let's see what's next here so we have transition effects so you can gently switch from one slide to another okay gently all right so if you have a sudden switch to the next slide the audience can get jarred okay if you've ever been jarred you know you don't want to get jarred it's not a pleasant feeling all right so you want to gently go from one slide to the next and same thing here so be keep it simple all right so if you use different transitions for each slide, and it's kind of distracting as well. So decide on one. Okay, there can be only one transition. That's what I'm telling you. One. There can be only one. Uh, so apply, you know, find some cool uh, transition you like, and then stick to that through all the slides so that um, you don't jar your audience with no transitions, or if you have like a lot of different ones, then it's kind of distracting for everybody. Okay, don't want to distract your audience. Okay, so uh, let's see what's next. All right, so talk a bit about databases. Um, I don't know if y'all remember, I hope y'all remember from last time we, we spoke a little bit about databases and websites. And so now I'll talk a little bit more about what this database stuff is. So it's, it's a clever way or a, a organized way to, to stick data together, to gather data, blah, 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 to gather data gather your data, gather your data together in one place. And uh, typically in one table you'll have uh, one theme going on and then you're going to link these tables together. And within a table you have certain columns and that's for each data attribute. Sounds kind of fancy but that might be your name or your zip code or you know your birthday, stuff like that. Okay, so don't get too um, scared of the, uh, the uh, technical words here. Then uh, each record, okay, each kind of entry in your database is going to be in a different row. Okay, so just like, you know, rows in a farm. Uh, same thing, rows in a field, I guess is a better analogy. But all right, so you got rows there. And then, boom, boom, there's our key. Yeah, primary key to locate records. Okay, so... Um, Y'all actually know quite a bit about databases already. Okay, y'all thinking, what? I never heard of no database. What are you talking about, man? Okay, so we have what's called a primary key. So if you think about it, let me think. All right, how do I locate, you know, all this data? You know, a lot of things I like to talk about, a lot of times I like to talk about Amazon.com. Okay, uh, what they got on Amazon.com. Um, so each what uh, individual unit of whatever, whether it's a movie or a book or clothes or whatever they got on Amazon.com. Seems like that got the whole world on there, world on there these days. Okay, they have some kind of primary key. So they uh, got a unique number to that. Or you might go on YouTube. And if you look at the top of the URL on YouTube, you'll notice there's a little number. It's actually letters and uh, numbers. But uh, it's unique for each video you put on the YouTube. Okay, that's your primary key. Okay, so it's a way to identify each unique row in a database. Okay, so yeah, those videos are actually rows in a database. And um, so you might also think, all right, what else, what else is a primary key? Y'all know some already, like a social security number. All right, if you're paying taxes, you, you definitely know what a social security number is. It's how they locate people or locate taxpayers. 
Um, if you're a student at Leeward, well, or, or in UH system, or anywhere, um, you have a student ID. That's a primary key. Uh, or even on your car, a VIN, vehicle Identif identification number. Uh, big, uh, big number on your car. That, that's used to identify each car uniquely. So then that's in some database somewhere, uh, stored on some computer. So databases, you know, you already know about them. They're all over the place. Um, so that's what the primary key is, how you locate things in a database. Okay, let's see uh, one or two more tidbits here on the databases. And um, the database management system is a program that uh, users can interact with a database. You might have other programs, uh, such as a web page, web server, uh, interacts with the, the database management system, such as, yes, Amazon.com. OK, and then um, popular uh, databases or database management systems. Microsoft Access uh, is one. Also, SQL Server, they're both by Microsoft. SQL Server is for larger uh, companies. DB2 by IBM. Uh, MySQL, it's an open source. And uh, Base, that's an open office. And finally, Oracle. Okay, so I don't know if y'all know this. Uh, the owner of Oracle bought the island of Lanai. Okay, so you know, I always tell my students uh, if buying an island's on your bucket list, take database. Okay, we have a database class, ICS 113, and you can learn all about databases. And maybe, just maybe, buy your own island uh, if you work hard enough at it. Okay, we'll see you all a little later. Aloha.